Hey, I wanted to update you guys. Um, my posts were getting taken down. I don't know if this may be the same, um, but if you review my first video, you'll see that all of the things I said, um, well, about 90% of them have come out of the media since I said them and um, have been deemed to be true. Um, I have new information from inside the investigative process, and that is that there was a connection between the, the um, between Koberger and Kaylee um, two years ago. They have had two witnesses come forward and say that they were interacting at a, a bar in town. I know nothing about the city, so they were inter interacting with the bar. Anyway, the police believe that they perhaps went home together that night. And my only because phone records have been searched and they have discovered that um, all of a sudden, two years ago, all of a sudden, um, Kaylee's phone began being bombarded with messages from Brian Koberger. Um, there were about, t I think they said 27 messages left in a two week period after this particular date. And then um, sporadically after that, um, when they checked Kaylee's phone records to see, look at outgoing calls, she never once returned any of his calls. So we could be looking at a one night stand and someone dealing with rejection. Um, this is, uh, by the way, I'm not slut shaming. I'm not, I'm, a, I am a feminist. I do not, you know, subscribe to any misogyny whatsoever. So please don't think that's what this is. It's just what um, the police are finding out. That is the connection that no one will mention is that they believe that Kaylee and Brian possibly um, spent a night together. Maybe they didn't, maybe they just talked or whatever, but he became sort of um, really focused on her and um, bombarded, her, bombarded her telephone with um, calls to which she never returned any of them. Also, there's some, there's a lot of misinformation. People are just running wild with things. There's all these things about him wearing gloves after the crime to hide his fingerprints. That's ridiculous because think about it. If he was smart enough to do that, then wouldn't he have been wearing gloves when the crime was committed? Hello? And he thinks he's so smart that he's gonna get away with this, which is why he is um, not fighting the extradition. Um, he is going to say that the reason his DNA was found in the apartment was because he and Kaylee had spent time together. Um, that's going to be his out. Um, a murder weapon will never be found. He could have dropped it anywhere from here, from there to um, the East Coast. There's just no telling. Um, anyway, let's see if this stays up, if it gets taken down. This is last year here for me. If it stays up, I will um, give you some more information that I've got. Thanks. Um, hey guys, I wanted to report some new information regarding the Idaho 4. Um, let me first say that, you know, my pa my um, posting this quote-unquote insider information is not... Hey there, to those of you interested in hearing this report, um, I just want to let you know that I'm a relative of someone inside the investigation into um, the quadruple homicide in Idaho. Um, I don't, I don't want to be any more specific than that because I don't want to... I don't want to put anybody in a challenging or contentious situation regarding their continued employment. Um, and I will say what I'm about to tell you is secondhand, but it is from what I believe to be a very reliable source. Again, this can only be considered a rumor as I don't have firsthand knowledge. I never planned on posting any of this information out of respect for the victim's families. However, now that one of the victim's fathers has released some of the gruesome details himself, I'd like to share some of the um, investigative theory. Um, as you know, the two women were found in the same bed, but um, with similar wounds, that's what's being reported. Um, that's not exactly 100% true, um, at least in, in, in regard to the fact that they weren't, um, they hadn't fallen to sleep in the same bed. Um, one of the victim's wounds were deep gouges that were delivered with extremely aggressive force, so much so that the victim's liver and lungs were destroyed. Um, here's the theory that's happening. Um, they definitely think it was a man because of the force of the wounds. Um, the person must have been strong, very strong. Um, they think the man came into the room after doing what they did on the second floor. They went upstairs. Um, the person cleanly and quietly, I'm um, unalive to the first victim. The second victim awoke and tried to run. The man, they believe that the, 
the man possibly grabbed her and she screamed loudly, apparently. Um, the man then harmed her and the reason the wounds were of such force, he was doing it, he was delivering it quickly and forcibly to quiet her, um, which I apologize for how, I know it's disturbing, but anyway, um, how, how do we know that she screamed? Um, because three individuals reported hearing a scream between, um, between 3.45 and 4 o'clock. Um, that's why the police have such a specific time frame as to when the murders occurred. Because I don't know if you noticed, but um, the authorities weren't called the next day until late in the morning. Yet they had a very specific time frame when the murder happened. They think the scream is why. Um, and after reviewing video files from the neighborhood, uh, they reviewed security cameras in the area. And they have an audio file where you, where they, I haven't heard it, but I was told that a clearly, you can clearly hear a loud scream from a female. That scream was recorded at exactly 3.38 a.m. Uh, neighbors say they do, didn't call the police because they said there's often loud noise coming from the house. Um, I was told that there were parties there all the time. Again, I don't know if that's true, but it's what I was told. Um, the weapon used was a long serrated edged hunting knife with a fixed blade. The weapon had not been in the house. The person brought it with them and took it when they left. Um, the two victims were on the same bed, not side by side. One victim was found on top of the other. The reason is that the one tried to escape and was grabbed, harmed, and then shoved and fell on top of her friend. Um, that is why there is um, a lot, there's a lot of problem, blood, blood mixtures on this, at the scene. Um, uh, they're also desperately looking for this white car. The reason being is that it was seen speeding by an A&W slash gas, A&W gas station. I don't even know what that is, but anyway, that's, again, it could be wrong. I was just told it was seen speeding by an A&W gas station slash hangout um, at 3.45. Now, if the scream was recorded at 3.38 and the car sped by at 3.45, it's a very tight time frame, but it is possible that the person left immediately and rushed and was seen speeding by. Also, the scream may have been what caused the person to quickly leave. Um, that scream could have been what saved the other two roommates' lives. Um, the person knew that they might be detected, so they sped away. Again, this is all just rumor. Um, take it for what it is. Um, I just pray for these young people. I hope they rest in peace and that their families can find peace um, after this horrible crime. And I hope that the person who committed it can be brought to justice. Thanks a lot. Go ahead and say whatever you want. There was an accomplice and the police know that there was an accomplice that is still at large. Because he needed one of the residents to unlock the door. Duh. Has anyone stopped to think about some interesting details in this case? For example, to have committed the acts that they are saying Koberger committed, wouldn't he have been covered in blood, right? So why wasn't there a trail of blood leading, going through the house and out the door and into a car? Hasn't it occurred to anyone that maybe Kohlberger is a criminal mastermind. Maybe this was all planned. Um, what if, just think about this. What if Brian Kohlberger was simply the person's ride? What if he took the person to the home, dropped them off and then left and was seen speeding away in the white car? He's acting very cocky about not having done it. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he was in on it. Maybe there's a person no one has identified that actually committed the crimes. Um, the important thing is that these four beautiful souls have get justice at the end. Um, just think about these things. The pieces may come together.
the tarp will be much easier to find than the knife. Screw off, people. I'm innocent until proven guilty.